Right, here we are again. Um, <coughs> just going to do a quick tour of the boat, talk about some of the ideas this week. Um, but before I do that, I'd like to first of all uh, ask you to, uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe down there, button there somewhere. And the second thing, very quickly, the Tony's tool tips. Um, all of the tools that I've reviews, reviewed so far in my tool tips, I've put on my website. My website is svtapatia.com and on there there's a tab of resources and under resources there's a page of Tony's tool tips and there you'll find all of the tools that I've reviewed. Now, there I've put photographs of the tools or at least the, the current versions of the tools and there are links to various Amazons and so I've set it up as an Amazon affiliate program and, and um, if you click on one of those photos it takes you to your local Amazon and you purchase anything at all on Amazon, it doesn't have to be that tool, it can be anything else, um, me as an Amazon affiliate, I get a small, small percentage of your purchase price. It doesn't cost you any more at all, and a bit comes to me and, and goes, will be put towards the boat project. So that's one way you can help without actually, you know, you're not donating anything as such, you're just accessing Amazon through those links. Anyhow, enough of that. So, Hazel and I will wander into the boat now and we'll talk about her a bit. Let's start at the front here, Hazel. So, as you see, not much has gone on this week, but we're starting at the bow. First thought, anchor locker. And this is one that I haven't decided, really. On Miss Molly, we had a box on the foredeck, a mahogany box that the anchor chain went in. And I think I like that system. Advantages of that are that you've not got a hole in your deck that can fill up with water or lead water into the, in the inside of the boat. You've not got stinky, horrible anchor chain going down inside your boat. It stays outside. Um, disadvantage, of course, is that the weight is stored at deck level instead of lower down where it might be more advantageous to the boat. Um, but... I have a feeling at the moment that I'm going to put a box on the deck and the anchor chain will go in that. Next thought, windless. Certainly won't have an electric windless. Manual windless may be. In the past, I've always just pulled the chain up by hand. It's not that difficult in truth. Um, you know, if you, if you wait, if you pull and wait as the, the, the boat goes forwards as you pull, so you're not pulling the boat forwards, you just take a bit of slack up and the boat moves forwards by itself, doesn't it? So you're taking up the slack until the chain is vertical and then, then you've just got the weight of that vertical and the anchor, obviously, to lift. Um, it's not that difficult to pull up by hand, but I'm not getting any younger. Um, I might go for a manual windlass. Interesting is that manual windlasses seem to be not being made anymore by the manufacturers. So... Um, there's a few still on sale. If I want a manual windlass, I think I'm going to have to buy it soon because they're, they're, as far as I can tell, the last ones are in stock now and I don't think they're being made anymore. But everybody wants electric. Anyhow, that's the foredeck as it stands. So we're going to go inside the boat now. This will be difficult for Hazel with a camera, so, so we'll see how shaky it is. But in we come. So behind you, Hazel... If you turn around, you're looking into the forepeak. This will be just a, a V-berth, double berth. Um, you know, it's completely simple, a bed. Underneath the bed will be a water tank. I think I'm going to buy stainless steel water tanks. Um, I've seen a, a place in England that, that makes stainless water tanks that I, I like the look of. Not too scarily expensive. So that's what's going in there is it's simple there'll be some shelves either side for clothes storage and whatever but um, basically a simple feed berth up there in here we're in the saloon area settees either side um, and a settee across in front of this bulkhead here so it will make it easy to get into that hatchway because you're about to kneel on the settee and through the hatch under this settee here, I imagine at the moment the batteries will come. Batteries. Quick thought about batteries. I'm building a low-tech boat. In many ways traditional. 
Um, but of course you do take some advantages of some modern technology. Um, I don't intend to have massive amounts of batteries. I've, I've been looking around a bit, thinking about it. Um, in Miss Molly we just simply had a car battery, but um, these deep cycle um, AGM batteries look better. Maybe something in the 150, 160 amp hour range one AGM battery I think will do for the house or the service battery, depending on what you want to call it. Clearly there'll be a second starter battery for the motor, that will probably be a regular car battery. Um, but that will do me in electrics wise I believe. Um, to charge the batteries, clearly we've got the, the alternator on the, on the motor and we'll have a couple of solar panels. In terms of electrics, it'll be quite simple. Reading lights, obviously inside, LED reading lights, low draw. I've still got a couple of old um, oil lamps that I'll fit, um, but certainly LED reading lights as well in here. Um, navigation lights, of course, you know, they've got to be legal. They've got to be up to, up to the job, haven't they? But they're also running on LED technology these days, so much less draw than, than the lights that we had on Miss Molly, for example. So electrical draw for lighting is, is much reduced. It's a great thing. And the, the chart table is going to come against this bulkhead here. So, um, and in the sort of traditional style of boat, chart table will be here with the electric panel, switch gear and whatever. Um, underneath, I imagine, underneath the chart table, I'm going to put the battery charger. I've got a dual voltage battery charger for 110 uh, to 20 volts for shore power, charging the batteries from shore power. So it's coming in there. Switch panels with, for, you know, switches for various bits of electrical gubbins. Um, and in terms of navigation and, and safety equipment, I certainly want a VHF radio. I would like a um, new VHF radio with AIS capability and then that obviously leads to the question of whether we want a, a chart plotter because then the AIS can be overlaid on the plotted chart on the chart plotter. I think if I go for a chart plotter I'll just use an iPad um, but in this area um, you want capability for that iPad also up in the cockpit area capability for that. Um, you'll need some mains outlets. Question whether I need an inverter. I think I probably do need a small inverter so that I can, I can charge a laptop and whatever because I certainly need, need a laptop on board. So this area is the area that's going to be a bit less low tech. You know, some, some electrical equipment coming in there and that's probably why I need you know, 150, 160 amperes, amp hours of battery. Um, without that... I could probably get away with less battery capacity, but I do want that. A small inverter, chart plotter, AIS on the VHF. Um, yeah, so that's going to come in this vicinity. And one other thing I want to say is, is I mentioned batteries under there, but I, I said batteries in the plural, but, um, but it'll be the, the service battery will be in there, the motor battery will be in the engine room, and uh, also in the engine room there, is, is a, the diesel tanks coming in there, obviously. So motor and diesel tank in that area. Um, let's think a bit further through. In the galley, worktops, sink, of course. Um, it won't be a pressurised water system. It'll be, I've, got, I've, I've got some lovely old pub hand pumps. Um, I've got two of them. I'll probably only fit one. And I will fit that for the, the hand pump for the drinking water um, and there'll be a foot pump for salt water so that you can you can wash up in salt water if need be and, and just rinse with, with the fresh water um, the stove I've got a Dickinson Bristol diesel stove that will be going in there um, which will be fed with a gravity feed diesel system that has a little electric fan in it which you don't need to run very often but, but now and again needs to be run but it doesn't draw much um, so very little electrical draw there it also very economical give off a lovely warm dry heat no condensation unlike propane heat 
um, or propane cooking, so condensation free, lovely warmth, um, you know, getting up in the morning and, and putting your coffee and your, your porridge on or whatever and on, your, on your diesel stove is a delight, unless you're somewhere hot, of course, but um, um, I'll probably ca take a little camping gas stove just for, for, you know, the tropics and hot places where you don't want a, a diesel stove running. Um, no fridge. I'll just deal with storing fresh stuff as best I can. You know, against the hull is always a bit cooler. Um, and just use techniques as best I can to keep fresh fruit and veg fresh. What else have we got? Over in the head area, um, I'm thinking at the moment of a composting toilet, which is a, a new development in boats. There's a few websites talking about composting toilets. Um, and a YouTube video also I found that, that um, have a composting toilet on their, on their boat. Interesting idea. No through holes, no horrible you know, valves and whatever to, to block up and repair, um, as long as they don't stink. I, I'm seriously thinking about composting. Um, so that would be simple. Obviously a sink in the, in the, in the head area with, with a drain. Um, again, probably with a foot pump for the water there. Straightforward. Then let's step through a bit, Hazel, shall we? So that's the, the head area. This is the galley area. Obviously, we need a fair bit of shelving in here. Um, storage, as well as the cooking and, and working area. But that should be straightforward. Um, then obviously in here we've got the engine room and you've seen already in another video I've got the, the Volvo Penta 13 horse twin cylinder diesel engine with sail drive. It's coming in there, alternator on it of course for, for battery charging. Um, all very simple. Yeah and, and that you know as it stands is the systems that I'm, I'm thinking about. Low tech Oh, perhaps I should mention a wind vane. These boats often have a trim tab system wind vane. Uh, Dan on Hester built one himself. I dare say various other people have built them themselves. I'll be looking at a homemade wind vane. I do have an electric autopilot, which I will take along and fit, of course. Um, some current draw involved in autopilots, but um, you know, as long as you're not using it all the time, it's fine. A short for a short amount of time you can use them. Um, that's pretty much the systems I'm thinking of. It's junk rigged as you know, so you know, simple low tech sails. It will be the low tech junk rig as well. Um, Douglas fir battens, um, you know, simple, 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 low tech, easy to maintain, cheap to run, I hope. We'll cut there. Time for a Tony's tool tip. This week, something special. This this tool always reminds me of, of when I was helping Scott on his boat in, in California, Vela. Um, I can never use this tool without thinking of him because uh, there we had to put a had to put a new forefoot on the bottom of the keel and, and I, I glued a piece of block up on there and then later when it was glued in place, use this tool to shape it um, to the final shape and it, was, it worked really well. So here it is, at least this is a similar one, it's a different make. Um, in America I was introduced to this as a sawzall, um, we call these a saber saw I believe. Comes with a variety of different blades. Um, this is the Einhell one, a cheap, I don't think there's much point in buying an expensive one because it's a pretty coarse tool. You know, you're not going to do really fine woodwork with it. On the other hand, if you're careful, you can use it for shaping wood fairly accurately-ish. You know, <laughs> finish it off with a sander. But it, it, in some ways, it's a brutal tool. Different blades for cutting wood, for metal, for, for various materials. Um, yeah, they're not that expensive. <sighs> And 
I've used it on this boat build quite a lot for cutting the notches where the um, where the stem or stem knee fit in and where the stern post knee fit in into those panels. I use this for, for cutting, for adjusting the notches when I had to, if I'm cutting through a lot of pieces of wood, if there's a, a floor beam and some panels and, you know, thick wood. A great, if you use them with care, you can be semi-accurate with them. Um, Marvellous little tool. There's not much more to say about it really, is it? Is there? Um, great for cutting coarse wood. There you go. Riches in the sunset, stand there to see. Tell me where you're going so decisively. What's your destination? Tell me where you're bound. We can move together where adventures abound. Running free before the breeze. Are there many days such as these?